Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at the very first method we always learn when we solve first order differential equations and that is dynamic integration. Let's have a look. So say we have an example where we have dy dx is equal to 2. This is a differential equation because you have a derivative within an equation. So basically what we want to do when we solve this differential equation is to ask what is y going to be so that the derivative is 2. And we know the answer to that is going to be 2x plus some constant value. And this is basically direct integration. So let's look at something that's a little bit more complicated. So say we have an equation dy dx is equal to e to the x minus sine of x. We know it's a first order derivative again because you have a first derivative in the equation. Our dependent variable is y and our independent variable is x. If you look at the rest of the equation, you only have independent variables in there, which means you can use dynamic integration. So basically, all we're going to do is integrate both sides of that equation. So we get y is equal to e to the x plus cos x plus the integrating factor c. So this c value here means that there's a host of solutions for this equation. So, this we call our general solution. Because we don't know what that C is. And it can be anything, and that depends on initial conditions. So, say I have initial conditions here, where uh, if x is 0, then y is 4. So an initial condition is like, for example, if you had a car that was starting from standstill. You know when it starts, you're going to have zero displacement happening, and the time is also going to be zero. Our velocity is also zero. So that's an initial condition. And then in order to find what we call the particular solution for this equation, we substitute that initial condition into the general solution, which means we get 4 is equal to e to the 0, cos 0 plus c, which means that our constant value is going to be 2. That means that our particular solution is going to be y equals e to the x plus cos x plus 2. And the terminology of general solution, particular solution, initial condition, or boundary condition, these are important because regardless of what type of differential equation you're working with, the terminology is the same. And that just means the language is the same. So I'm always going to be asking for what is the general solution, even if we're working with second order differential equations. So it's important to remember. I'll see you next time. Bye.